what if we don't get a whole number when we divide the smaller the smallest mole value by all the values what do we do so let's refresh ourselves with the process of getting empirical formula so convert the percent value to just the mass by removing the percentage symbol and just make it a gram always bearing in mind that we have 100 grams of sample and then right from the mass values we readily convert it to moles by dividing the mass by the molar mass that can be found in the periodic table. And the moment we get the mole answers, we locate or we determine what is the smaller or the smallest value and we divide all the values by that small value. And then we should generate a whole number answer. But for, for this recording tutorial, we have to know now what what are we going to do? What if it's not going to be a whole number? So this was the example that we did in the first video. So this was a very concrete example of carbon and hydrogen in which it readily gives us a whole number answer for carbon and hydrogen. So we can easily say that it's a CH3. This is supposed to be a CH3. Now, let's go to the second example here. What if it's not going to be a whole number? So let's take a look at how we approach this example number two. Example number two, it says that what is the empirical formula for a compound that contains 43.64% phosphorus and 56.36% oxygen? If you notice that there are only two um, components, phosphorus and oxygen, and the total of the percentages is 100%. So the values are okay, then we can begin. So let's start with 43.64 grams of phosphorus and also 56.36 grams of oxygen. So the second step is we need to divide these elements with its molar mass in the periodic table. So for phosphorus, for every one mole of P, the mass is 30.97 grams. For oxygen, one mole of oxygen is or has a mass of 16.0 grams. So when we divide this, we will generate the answers of 1.4 moles of phosphorus and 3.5 moles of oxygen. So these are our answers. Now, we know that we can cancel out already the gram, the gram, and the gram. That's why we generate 1.4 moles of phosphorus and 3.5 moles of oxygen. That's already the new unit. Now, let's proceed to the next step. What do we do next? So right after... Right after getting the moles, we need to choose the smaller value. So the smaller value between the two is 1.4. So therefore, we need to divide all the values with 1.4. So 1.4 moles P over 1.4. And then 3.5 moles of oxygen divided by 1.4. Now, when you put this in the calculator, you will get the answer, of course, of 1 for phosphorus. And for oxygen, it's going to be uh, 3.5 divided by 1.4 is 2.5. So 2.5 of oxygen. We're not getting any whole number for oxygen. No problem for P. Now, if you are faced with this kind of problem in which the coefficients that you get are not whole numbers. Then you have to multiply, look for a number that the least number that you can multiply to make these numbers whole number. Whatever you do to this number, you have to do to all also, even if it's whole number. So you can guess it. For 2.5, the least number I can multiply it to is 2. So that 2.5 becomes a 5. So that is the right thing. So I will multiply 2.5 by 2, and at the same time, I multiply the 1 by 2. Whatever I do to one element, that has to be done to the rest of the element, even if it's a whole number, to balance it. So, 1 times 2, so I now get 2 phosphorus, and for 2.5 times 2, of course, I'm going to get 5 oxygen. Therefore, therefore, my coefficients 
will now be 2 and 5, not anymore 1 and 2.5. So my coefficients, my new coefficients are 2 and 5. Therefore, I can already conclude that my empirical formula is P2O5. P2O5 is named as diphosphorus pentaoxide. So what are the cases wherein the numbers have to be multiplied, have to be multiplied by a certain multiplier so that they become whole numbers? These are the numbers that you need to watch out for. The numbers 0 0.33, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, and 0.75. So these four are possibilities. So if you get a 0 0.33, you need to multiply this by 3 so that it will be a whole number. So that's going to be a 0 0.999, which is just equal to 1. The 0 0.5, which, which we just saw from 2.5, of course, the least number you can multiply is a 2. If it's a 0 0.25 and 0 0.75, both of these have to be multiplied by 4 so that you can generate a whole number for them. So that's it. This is actually the overview of everything that deals with empirical formula. Take note of the steps. What we did is we divided the grams by its molar mass found in the periodic table. And then right after getting the moles, we need to divide it by the smaller value. And then you examine the quotient from that dividing the ratio. If the ratio is not a whole number, so four possibilities for that are these. You have to multiply it by this multiplier times three times two or times four so that you can generate the whole number. And take note, whatever you do to one element, you have to do the same and fair and square to the rest of the elements given in the problem. And in the end, you can get the whole number and then you can conclude that that is the empirical formula of the substance. So that's it. I hope that it's clear to you already how to get the empirical formula. Watch out for the next video tutorial on how to get molecular formula of compounds. Thank you.